Hello guys and welcome to my channel, Kuromos here. Today I'm bringing you an almost pure fighter build. We will be specialized in ranged combat. We are going to wear a medium armor and use a crossbow in close quarters. Our subclass of choice is going to be Battlemaster, as it provides a lot of utility and bonuses for our shooting. On top of that, we will take a single level in Paladin at character level 6. This is optional, as you can finish the build as 12 levels of fighter, if you wish to have an additional feat. A single level of Paladin provides with great healing, plus a very beneficial bonus action that we will showcase in the step-by-step -step guide. Please let me know in the comments if you found this build fun or interesting, and without further delay, let's begin. We start as a fighter, having access to Second Wind, a very powerful healing ability. Our fighting style, it is going to be archery, granting us a plus two to our attack rolls. We will focus on dexterity while keeping the rest of the stats balanced. For our single level of Paladin to work, we're going to have Charisma 14. Finally, for our skills, we want to have a bit of athletics and intimidation for role-playing purposes. At fighter level 2, we will get access to Action Surge, a very very powerful ability, which will greatly improve our performance as we level up. Once we reach level 3, we are going to choose our subclass, and it is going to be Battle Master. This will give us access to superiority dice. We're going to have four and they will recharge on short rest. We are going to use these to spend on maneuvers. Here I'm going to recommend rally to assist our party, trip attack as it is going to keep our enemies prone, granting us advantage on follow-up attacks against them. Last maneuver, we have plenty of choices. Disarming attack or menacing attack are really great. These are my recommendations, but please feel free to pick others if you wish to. Keep in mind, we will get more of these as we level up. Once we reach level 4, we will get access to our first feat. Our choice here, it is going to be Crossbow Expert. This will let us attack enemies that are within our melee range and this is very useful since we want to shoot people in the face, pretty much. It will also improve our piercing shot, improving the effect of gaping wounds. Piercing shot, it is a skill that we will receive once we equip a crossbow. We will greatly benefit from this passive later on as we will be able to attack more often level 5 we receive our second attack and things start to get very spicy. Once we reach character level 6 we are going to multi-class into Paladin for a single level. This will give us access to Lay on Hands which surprisingly scales with character level. This means that Lay on Hand it is going to improve without us needing to invest more levels in Paladin. Let's take a moment to see how our character looks like at this point. So we have our crossbow here equipped and this is going to give us access to a couple of skills. The first one it is going to be Brace. We're basically going to spend movement points to get increased damage. We also have Piercing Shot that has been improved through our feat choice previously. Paladin grant us Divine Sense which is going to grant us bonuses to attack against undead and fiends. We also get access to Inquisitor's Might, giving each of our shoots two additional divine damage, plus the ability to daze. Daze is going to stop enemies from benefiting from their dexterity modifier, pretty much reducing their armor class, making them much easier to hit. We are going to start our attack sequence with a trip attack. If we succeed, the enemy will be prone. Further attacks on prone enemies will let us have an advantage against them. Keep in mind for this to work, 
we need to be close to the enemy, 3 meters or less. You can see as well how strong our healing capabilities are. We have a great toolset to support our party in their need. We have a total of 3 charges of Lay on Hands that they will recharge per long rest and a total of 4 superiority dice. At character level 7 we are going to have our second feat since we will be a fighter of level 6. Our choice here it is going to be Sharpshooter. This is a passive that we will trigger on and off. We will perform our trip attack and if we succeed we can trigger this passive on we will get a minus 5 to hit, but we will have a plus 10 to damage. Since the enemy is prone and pretty much defenseless, we will going to have advantage shooting at him. So it is very likely that our attack hits, delivering a lot of damage to him. Here at character level 8, we are getting access to new maneuvers. Here I think my recommendation will be menacing strike. If we succeed, the enemy will be frightened. Frightened enemies are unable to move. If you want some alternatives, you can pick the ones that you can see on the video. At character level 9, we will become fighter level 8. And we will have access to our last feat. We will choose ability improvement and improve our dexterity further. We continue our progression and we reach fighter level 9. Here we are getting a passive call Indomitable. This will allow us, once per turn, to reroll a failed saving throw. We move on into fighter level 10, which is going to improve the power of our superiority dice. Before, each time we use a damaging maneuver, it is going to add 1d8 to the damage roll. At this level, this will become a 1d10. Here we're getting new maneuvers to add to our arsenal. To wrap up the build with, we will get our 11th level of fighter, giving us access to our third attack. Now that the build is done, let's see this in action. I'll leave you here two combat showcases for your viewing pleasure. I must admit the first combat was a little bit sloppy, so if you want to see a better explained combat, please go to the second one. Here you can see how our shots hit pretty hard, thanks to the sharpshooter feet. Here I forgot to utilize some of the buffs, but since I take the action search, I decide to go all in and try to damage this enemy as much as possible.
here you can see the correct sequence properly done. We go with Brace and Inquisitor's Might. Both of these consuming only a bonus action. Then we shoot at him, knocking him prone and giving him the Daze debuff. We proceed to activate our passive for extra damage. To continue our killing spree, we will just go with Search and then we will focus on the mage. We start with a piercing shot, delivering the gapping wound debuff. Now we will have extra damage in our follow up shots, so I can guarantee the hit. To finish the turn, since we don't want this enemy to get close to us, we try to frighten him with our menacing shot. We succeed and our enemy covers in fear, unable to move for the rest of his turn. Here you can see something interesting to be aware with this build. If we attack the enemy far away we will have disadvantage, but if we attack the one close to us we will not, thanks to our crossbowman passive. So to have a higher chance to hit, we focus on the enemy close to us. Hope you enjoyed the video, thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one. Adios!